home for Christmas You can count on me Please have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree Christmas Eve will find me where the love lies having a town council meeting here. You said if you got elected, you'd get the town hall finished once and for all. Once and for all. That's what you said. We had a snag hat, that's all. Uh, find us a doctor yet? <sighs> I call this meeting of the St. Nicholas Betterment Committee to order. First, <clears throat> On the agenda, we have just got word that St. Nicholas has been named one of the top 100 towns of populations under 1,500 in America. Oh, <laughs> Obviously, we're, we're hoping that this is going to boost our tourist trade. It better. Mm -hmm. Second on the agenda, selection of the honoree for this year's Grand Electrician of the Tree Lighting Ceremony. Almost everyone in town's already been honored. <laughs> Some of them nine or ten times. <laughs> we need more townspeople. We need a doctor. Who wants to live in a town without a doctor? Now, what have you been doing about finding us a doctor? Well, Hap, I ran it's all over the country. Man. This is our latest response. It's another rejection. This one's from a doctor in Nome, Alaska. And he doesn't want to live here? Too remote, he says. I don't get it. I mean, we got a skating rink. We got the St. Nicholas Literary Society. We got the world's largest hay bale. People don't know paradise when they see it. Maybe it's because we got a woman mayor. We got a woman sheriff. I didn't vote for you. Well, I didn't vote for you either, you old Scrooge. <laughs> All right, now everybody, <laughs> listen up. Hap's right. If we don't get a doctor by January 1st, we're gonna have to close the hospital. And then without either one of them, who's gonna wanna raise their children here? And who's gonna wanna retire here? Kind of hard driving three hours to the nearest hospital when you're having a heart attack. Doesn't anybody here know a good call during doctor? I do. Bob, I know he's your son and all, but get real. Mike'll never come back here. Broke my heart when he left the first time. Mine too. And I'm just trying to help. How's Mike been since his wife passed away? It's been four years and, uh, He's not over it yet. He don't never get over it. Yeah. No, but you got to get on with your life. He might be better off here. He sure would. It's a moot point. Let's go on. <sighs> Didn't Mike used to be kind of sweet on you, man? Oh, Hap, we were kids. Uh, he's coming home for Christmas, you know. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything, Bob. Yeah. Why don't we make him grand electrician this year? Hello? Yeah, and the mayor can ask him to stay on. Excuse right. Excuse me. Now, don't go doing too much. You'll scare him away. I have to declare right now that this idea does not have the endorsement of the mayoral office. You don't have an office. I will. That's a great idea. Oh, right. Sarah it asked. Yeah. Can do. Look. Mark my words. Mike Greiser will never come back here for good. Please, listen to me. I just don't want you to get hurt again. So what is going on with you, Mike? 
Not a year ago. You would have never given up a case like this. It's a single parent thing. I promised Jilly I'd take her out Christmas shopping. And as soon as I was ready to walk out the door, this myocardial infarction walked in. <laughs> you can't break a promise to a kid, Fred. Not at Christmas time. Don't I know it. Well, if you're really serious about giving it up, I'll do it. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Mike, hmm? you OK? To tell you the truth, Hal, I'm not sure. You look stressed out. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Well, you've been more than a little distracted lately. Hmm? I said, listen, uh, I'm really late for a very important appointment with my kid. Maybe we can talk about this later, OK? OK. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. Why do we have to go to Iowa for Christmas? Why can't we stay here with our friends? Well, Grandpa's kind of expecting us. Why can't he come here? He used to do that. Oh, well, he's, he's getting kind of old, you know. Yeah, and scarier every year. Thank you. Bob? Scary? <laughs> you must be thinking of somebody else. I remember this place. I remember Mom saw an elf in the window. And she wanted it, only it was for display only. And the guy in the store, he wouldn't sell it to her. But she badgered him for an hour until he finally gave in. And then she got it home, and she thought it was really ugly. And she hid it in the back of the coat closet. I'm sorry, Dad. For what? I know it's hard for you to talk about Mom. Since when did you get so smart? Good upbringing. <laughs> you OK? Yeah, I'm OK. How about you? I miss her. Yeah. But I don't think she'd like it very much if she knew we were moving around here because she wasn't here. I think going home and making some popcorn and watching a Christmas movie would be good for you. Hmm. OK, sounds like a good idea. Put off the red-nosed reindeer. That's what I think. OK, doctor. And after that, Frosty the snowman. Oh, you got to be careful. Don't mix your medicines. Side effects. Hospital. You'll do it when you get back. Great. You're going to be okay, Dad. You will. Dr. Chen. Dr. Chen. Wait to get more. Aneurysm. What happened to Pearson? I thought she was on call. Chicago. Airplane. Snowstorm. Yeah, sure, Hal. Let's get uh, in there. Mike, my office. I'm sorry, Hal. I don't know what's wrong with me. Ever since Thanksgiving, I've, I've felt... I don't know. Whenever I walk into the OR, I break out into a sweat. My heart starts beating faster. It's been building up for a long time. Lately, it's gotten worse. And today, for the first time in my life, I couldn't do my job. What are you afraid of? Failing, I guess. Can I ask you a personal question? With help? Do you think 
this has anything to do with your wife passing away? She's been gone for four years. Well, something's going on inside you. And denying it will only make it worse. Well, how can you deny something you're not even aware of? I have an idea. You're going home for Christmas, right? Yeah. Take some extra time. Now go home and deal with this, Mike. Let it go. You know you're safe there, and you have people all around you who love you and can help you through it. I haven't seen most of those people for over 20 years. Mike, your patients used to know they were in good hands the moment you stepped into the room. That is no longer the case. You're not fit to practice medicine in this condition. And if you don't do something about it, you won't have a career. I know. Good. Now get out of here. Go on. thyroid problem now that I think about it. Down there is the hospital. I work down there, helping Dr. Jenkins. I wonder how he's doing. Wait till you see the town square. Every year, some old farmer will give them a great big pine tree for a Christmas tree. Everybody in the town comes out to help decorate it. And somebody got the honor of plugging in the lights on Christmas Eve. Oh, it's really something. <laughs> What's this?
know Mayor Sarah. Sarah? Ladies and gentlemen, it is my official duty to inform you that this year, St. Nicholas's favorite son and most illustrious graduate, other than our own mayor, Mike Greiser, has been nominated the Grand Electrician of the Town Tree and will plug in that tree this Christmas Eve! <laughs> mayor Gladstone will now present you with the Golden Plug. A year's supply of Flo Kosinski's famous Christmas fruitcake. Smile. Sorry about all that hoop. I guess we, I guess we got a little excited, huh? <laughs> I was a little surprised. Yeah. Well, now you can relax a bit. Uh, anything in particular you want to do while you're here? Oh, just take it easy. I was thinking of going and visiting Doc Jenkins. Oh. Uh, Doc Jenkins passed away about two months ago. I, I didn't tell you, Mike, we could have... I didn't want to upset you. Who's running the hospital? Oh, well, that'd be Sarah. But she's a vet. Yeah, but she's mighty good at stitching people up. <laughs> she really is. And even though she's the best veterinarian around, people are a little leery about letting her work on them. Being as how her, her idea of what to do for a, for a broken leg is euthanasia. <laughs> uh, did we forget somebody? Jilly! Hey! Aren't you freezing? Come on up here, girl. You're gonna catch pneumonia. Come on! What's the matter with you? I'm just going through a shy phase. Oh. We've done everything humanly possible to get ourselves a doctor. Nobody wants to come and live here. You'd think somebody would see the potential. Mm. I don't get it, that's for sure. <laughs> mm. Hey, you! I got a whole box of Christmas decorations waiting for you. I didn't want to hang them until you got here. Come on, I'll show them to you. Come on. I don't cut myself a personal tree anymore. That one they put up in the square every year, I consider that mine. This year it actually is because I donated it. Generally, I hang these all over the place. What's the matter with your dad? I think something's wrong with him. Mm. Because it's Christmas and your mother's not here? That's what I thought. But he says no. Yeah. It's a mystery. He always was a little mysterious, even when he was a kid. Really? Mm -hmm. How? He was always keeping things to himself. You never really knew if he was sad or happy or sick or well. But he's still like that. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, excuse me. Do you think we could designate this a, a no smoking area? Oh, sorry. It's a really bad habit, you know? <sighs> but it's the only one I have left. We have to put all those things up. Maybe we could just put up a few. Christmas used to 
appears to be your favorite holiday. People change, Bob. Uh, well, let's just do it for Jilly. What do you say? Sure. Would you go and get a pair of scissors in a drawer in the kitchen, please? You know, Mike, Laurie was a wonderful woman, and I miss her too. But there comes a point when a person has to get on with his life for the sake of everybody else around him. It's just not that easy. I didn't say it was easy. Dad liked the same books I do. Hasn't changed for 20 odd years. I have tonight's agenda right here. Let's cut to the chase. Bob, how's Mike doing? Oh, you know, Mike, it's kind of hard to read. No, he's not. He's playing his day on his face. He's frightened. He sure didn't act that scared. He's a nice man. He was being polite. Now, Sarah, Your Honor, you know St. Nicholas is paradise if you squint. All Mike needs is a little encouragement. I wish you'd all come to your senses. You know, you're going to have to get up the nerve and ask him one of these days, honey. I mean, he's our only hope. All right, all right, I will. But I refuse to tell him that he's our only chance to keep the hospital open. I intend to keep some semblance of pride. You're not still stuck on him, are you? Oh, Margie, come on, that was a long time ago. Besides, I'm a professional. And even if I did still have feelings for him, I wouldn't let that influence my behavior. Professionals are allowed to have feelings, too, you know. Feelings interfere with getting things done. You know that, Margie. You're supposed to be asleep. So are you. Bob is the only grandpa you have. I know. Well, maybe he ought to be a little nicer to him. We don't exactly have a lot in common. Well, how do you know? You gotta try to find something. You know, you'll regret it someday if you don't get to know him better. He's a wonderful man. Do you know he paid cash for my medical school? Doing extra farming for other people because he doesn't believe in loans. He's an amazing guy. Well, did you get some sleep? <laughs> now. First you go to Drysdale's, and then you go to Nick's for groceries. Do you remember where they are? Sure. Okay. You don't mind having Jilly around, huh? Are you kidding? Besides, she's gonna help me. Huh. Now, you go ahead. It's gonna be fine here. Okay. Yeah. Well, you two have fun then, huh? Yeah. Oh. Or else. Uh. Hey. What if we go and see the pigs, huh? You don't know what fun is until you've met a pig. That's right, I'm so all bagged up. Doc? 
<laughs> well, how'd you know what I wanted? Oh, Bob called, said you were coming by. Doc. <laughs> we're just so glad to have you back. You used to shovel the snow on our walk every winter in order to make money for medical school. Now, you remember that? <laughs> well, I sure do, Mr. Drysdale. Our walk has never been shoveled again by a doctor. <laughs> we knew you'd turn out to be a great surgeon. Everybody did. Well, thanks, Mr. Drysdale. Mrs. Drysdale. Wait till you see her. She's beautiful. <laughs> Come on. Here she is. <laughs> Isn't she a beauty? I just got her a week ago. Yeah, that is breakfast, honey. Come on. Here. Come on. Get it. Here. Here. Get it. Is she okay? I don't know. A pig that doesn't want breakfast isn't right. That, that's for sure. I better call Sarah. You stay here with Janet. Can't I come uh, with you? No, no, no. No, honey. Janet needs you to stay here. Okay. Uh, I'll be right back. I'll be right back, honey. I am so sorry about Doc, Mrs. Jenkins. I really wanted to talk to him while I was here. I just hope the next doctor we hire is single. He worked hard all his life to make that hospital go. It's sad to think of so much hard work coming to an end. Especially with so many attractive single women around town. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure you'll find someone to run the place. Somebody single. It's gotta be single. You know, Mike, he always followed your career. It made him so happy to see you were doing so well for yourself as a doctor. Uh, well, thank you, Miss Jenkins. Yeah, you know, Mike, I, I've been getting a twinge of rheumatism no, lately. Not, not now, Mother. Well, it's very nice to see you again, <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> let, let go of him, Mother. <laughs> She won't eat at all, and that, that's not like her. I get that, Kate. I don't think she feels well. She's probably right, Julie. Now, Julie, you remember, remember Sarah Gladstone? She was at the tree raising when you got here the other day. Hi. Uh, she's Janet's doctor. Julie, would you, uh, would you hand me the thermometer there? It's in the bag, please. Sarah and your dad were friends in high school. Did you know that? No. He never told me. He was always a little bit absent-minded. <laughs> so, what do you mean by friends? Well, uh, I mean, I used to call it going steady back then. <laughs> yeah, I believe that was the correct term. You're kidding me. You and my dad? Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, I know. Wow. So, what was he like back then? Your father? Well, he was very popular. He helped everybody. He was the star of the debate team, championship swimmer. He used to swim the river upstream just for fun. My dad? Mm-hmm. He <laughs> told terrible, terrible jokes. <laughs> they were horrible. Everybody loved him. Everybody thought he'd be coming back after college. Well, Bob, I know what's wrong with your sweet pig here. I can take it. She's pregnant. What? Mm -hmm. We're gonna have babies? Absolutely. I never heard of a pig delivering in December. You have now. Right. So, Mike, what do you think of that daughter of mine? I'm glad she's been so successful. Sure. Always oh, off someplace doing something, taking care of everything and everybody but herself. He's always been like that. <laughs> Since her mother died. Sarah was so young, I guess in order to get through things, she had to mother everybody else. How much do I owe you? 
on the house, Mike. You don't have to do that. Hey, I fed you more growing up than your own folks did. <laughs> you and Sarah are the best thing this town ever accomplished, Mike. I feel proud to know I played a part in your becoming a doctor. Thanks, Nick. all dressed in this suit for the prom but there was this poor little calf stuck in the mud by the road so he gets out in the rain wades through the mud and pulls this calf to safety and then the calf turns around and kicks him <laughs> i think that's when he decided to become a doctor because he felt that people were a lot safer and a lot cleaner too he had to go to the prom with mud all over him everybody was joking with him what's going on sarah's telling stories about you oh really yeah well i better be going I gotta stop by Saul Winkler's and inoculate his llamas. Thanks for coming out. Just watch her closely and call me when it's time. Okay. Say, I, uh. I got an idea. Why don't you take Mike off tomorrow and then show him all of the old sites, huh? Uh, I'm sure that you two have got a lot to talk about. Yeah, well, I'm sure she's probably pretty busy, too. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Yeah, well, I totally understand. If I didn't have a, a meeting, I, I would do it. I really would. Yeah, then take the day off. You've been working too hard as it is. The town council will back you on it, I promise. Well... Uh... How about two o'clock, huh? I'll take care of Chile. Oh, okay, two o'clock, then. Fine. He'll be waiting for you. Now, is there anything wrong with having a little bit of fun? What? Is it my imagination, or are you decorating a lot more than you used to? Oh, that's all part of the town council's plan to revitalize St. Nicholas. Mm -hmm. We want people to think of Christmas Eve here like they think of, of Mardi Gras in New Orleans. What's so funny? Nothing. Oh, that's all right. I understand. Went to the big city, learned the difference between Chardonnay and Merlot, and you forgot all about small town life. I didn't forget at all. I'd do anything to be able to come back here and live. Why don't you? Mike! Mike! How you doing? Long time no see. Ethan, is that you? Yeah. Hey, look, Doc. Straight as an arrow. You're my first splint. Well, you're a great doctor. Good to see you again. It's good to see you, too. Look, I know you did this for Bob. So did I. So why don't we just call it a day and I'll take you home? Oh, I don't want to go back home just yet. So quiet there. So when Twyla put in the dance floor, I knew it would go and I invested. Well, now, let me get this straight. You are a vet, you're the mayor, and you own part of a dance hall. And Dad's Cafe, we're partners. That's amazing. Oh, well, I wasn't exactly, no, 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 it's mine. Uh, I wasn't exactly stuck in, in traffic all day long, so I had time to invent my own life, I guess. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, why didn't you come back after med school? Well, I met Lori. <laughs> she never could have survived here. It's funny, I always thought that you would be the one to come back and I would be the one to stay away. You did? Why? Because you were the town hero. <laughs> well, if I'm such a hero, then why'd you break up with me? What? You broke up with me. Oh, never. I never would have done oh, that. Don't you remember sitting on the rock of the quarry, and, and it was 100 degrees, and everybody was swimming, and you said that you thought that it would be best if we started to date other people in college because you didn't know what was going to happen. Well, I seem to recall you thinking that was a pretty good idea. Well, I wasn't going to let you win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why haven't you gotten married? Oh, I'm dancing. Haven't ever fallen in love. Oh, 
Why not? I don't know, really. Too busy, maybe. Afraid you'd have to give up doing all those things you like to do, huh? Yeah, yeah as a matter of fact, I am, I'm afraid. I've seen too many relationships ruin careers. I think you haven't found the right guy. Mm, not too many would put up with my schedule. The right guy could. Everybody says you haven't gotten over the death of your wife. Why am I always the last one to hear about these things? You don't need to get over it, you know. I don't? No. No. It's really impractical to expect that of a human being. I miss my mother every day. So you wind up giving everybody else what you just getting in your own life, huh? I guess so. Say, did you ever learn how to dance? Nope. No? Well, then, now's the time to learn. Come on, let's go. Wow. <laughs> Did you ask him? What did he say? Actually, I didn't ask him. Why not? Well, we just never got around to the subject. What's got into you? This town is in a state of emergency, and you're out all night dancing. How did you know? Oh, I, I heard it from, uh, from Sadie Finkel. And she heard it from Jesse Flossmore, and she heard it from Connie Hawkins. I don't know where she heard it from. Call him right now, ask him out again. He knows we don't have a doctor. If he wanted the job, all he has to do is ask. Well, he hasn't seen the hospital for a while, so uh, give him a tour. Show him all the new doctor things that we pay for. Once he sees all those newfangled toys Doc Jenkins had put in, he'll jump on it. Just needs a little inspiration. One more afternoon with you won't make him suspicious. Bob? Bob, this is Sarah. Uh-huh. Um, is Mike there? Well, I'm not going to be gone long. Well, maybe I, I will. I don't know. She's going to show me around town some more. Some of the improvements. Strictly business. Sure, Dad. Yeah, we know. You haven't seen my cologne around here, have you? Smell OK to me. Why? Whoops, there she is. See you later. Yeah. He sure is in a good mood. Sure is. Hi. Hi. 
So where are we going? Oh, the new bank, the new skating rink, the hospital. been here plenty of times. No, not since we made the improvements. It won't take long. Whew. We have a lot of new equipment. Oh, it's still the same. <laughs> it hasn't changed a bit. You know, all this stuff here, this was all Doc Jenkins' idea. I figured if he made the place look cheerier, brighter, people wouldn't feel so bad about being here. It'd reduce their stress about being sick or hurt. Oh, boy. You know, he's the reason that I became a doctor. All he ever wanted to do in life was just make people better. You know, later on in life, Doc became kind of rebellious. He was sick of all the problems with HMOs and he refused to become a part of one. So he let people pay whenever they could, taking barter. You wouldn't believe how many chickens he had when he died. I mean, is it still in operation? Boy, this was in the city. Hello? Anybody home? You open? Hi, Ruby. Hi, Clee. What's the matter? <gasps> Greedy got hit in the eye at practice. Well, we wouldn't have come in except it looks worse than usual. I panicked. The eye is so close to the brain. OK. Come on in here. I'll take a look at it. I'd rather the doc take a look at it, if you don't mind, Sarah. No, I don't mind. Mike? Oh. Glad you like the dance club, doc. It's fun. Did I see you there? Jerry Hopper told me. Said he saw you, Sarah, there, and he seemed to be having a good time, just like in the old days. There. Oh, boy. You're going to have a very cool scar to show your friends. Really? Oh, yeah. Do you have any adhesive tape, Sarah? Ah, uh, look. We're out. How about a large bandage? All out. Duct tape? Looking. Ah. Oh, good. This will do. Now, you're going to have to keep an eye on this all night. I want you to wake him up every couple hours and look into his good eye and see if it's dilated. I'm afraid you're going to have to sit out a couple of games there, Grady. Oh, I can't tell you how grateful we are. Thanks, Doc. Come on. You all right? Why don't you show him up? I hope Dad makes it back. Yeah, I do too. His car is blocking my plow. Grandpa! Oh, don't be afraid. That, that happens all the time. We just have to turn on this, this old lamp here. Yeah. There you go. That's nice. Oh, and we better, we better build up that fire to it. It's going to be a while. Uh, you know, your dad used to love to sit in front of the fireplace and read. He did? Yeah. <laughs> what else do you know about him? Well, he used to... Are you sure you don't want to play with that computer of yours? Nah, that's boring. Uh, uh, he didn't like pigs too much. 
I do. I love Janet. I know, I know. I'm, I'm happy about that. You know, I used to be scared of you. You were? I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. That's not your fault. I Sometimes I am kind of grisly. Do you like popcorn? Well, I've got a, I've got a little popper there that fits right into the fireplace. Oh, I think it's in the kitchen. I'll be right back. No road, no phone, no doctors. Two feet of snow, but at least we have soup. You say split pea or or chicken noodle? Well, this is fine. Is it? Mm. Oh. Mmm. It's good. There you go. Uh, not only is she a vet and a mayor and an entrepreneur, but she can cook too. Mmm. <laughs> I still don't understand why you don't have a family. Don't have enough time? You gotta make the time. Jilly taught me that. Mmm. She has made everything about my life more meaningful. I have to admit, she was nice being home. Must mean it's still a great place. It is. Then why don't you stay? Don't answer that. I don't want to know. You pulled Pete Peterson out of the water, gave him mouth to mouth. You saved his life. <laughs> Well, I remember doing that. I just can't believe that I did. And the town declared Mike Greiser Day. <laughs> if I'd come back here, it would be a lot different. What was your wife like? She was smart and funny. She was different than anyone else I ever met. You did the right thing. You do. Absolutely. Moving away from here gave you experiences you never would have had here. That's right. And Jilly is the best reason of all. Oh. I just, uh, I've never talked with anybody about this before. I better get us some wine. Wait a minute. Get you your blanket. I'll see you tomorrow morning. See ya. Good night. Thank you for showing me around. You're welcome. Sarah. Look, there's something that I've been, uh, 
I've been wanting to ask you, but I, I've been so scared of the answer that I haven't been able to do it, but now I have to. See, the, the whole reason that everybody's been so nice to you is because, first of all, they really do love you, but secondly, because they want you to take over for Doc Jenkins. Sarah. If we don't find a doctor, we're going to have to close the hospital. This town will die, Mike. I'd like to help you out, really. I would, but I can't. You see, I, uh, I just got a promotion. Oh, well, that's good. It's true. As a matter of fact, I just found out about it yesterday morning before you picked me up. As it turns out, I won't even be able to stay for Christmas. They need me right away. I'll be heading up the auto laryngology unit in Minneapolis. It's a chance of a lifetime. Yeah, of course it is. I'm sorry. It'll be hard to tell everybody else. But it was very nice seeing you again after all these years. We don't have to... Goodbye. Work this morning from the hospital when the power came back on. You know, just to, just to, you know, see how things were going. I got some wonderful news. You did. What? Uh, well, I got a promotion. It's a big jump in pay. It's very prestigious. The only problem is they're going to need me back there right away. I guess we'll miss Christmas here, Bob. He got a promotion at the place where he works in Minneapolis. He's going back there. What? I can't believe it. What did we do wrong? I don't think it's anything we did. I'm sorry, Hap. I tried. He's a hard case. She did her best. We know you did your best, honey. Well, I don't know about the rest here, but uh, I don't feel much like having a meeting tonight. Me neither. See ya. We'll reconvene when everybody's got over it. Oh, Come on, Al, I'll buy you a coffee. sure are easy to get along with. Not like some people I know. We come back here 
And my dad gets happy for the first time in years. So what are we doing? We're going home early. Now he's gonna be all sad again. You figure it out. Morning. Morning, Mike. Is there coffee? Yeah, fresh pot. Listen, Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about this, but there's nothing I can do. The hospital needs me. Yeah. I sure hope you know what you're doing. I do. Look, I, uh, I'm going to go into town and gas up. I'll grab some breakfast there, and then I'll pack when I get back. I want to get on the road as soon as possible. Suit yourself. Gosh, Mike, Edith Drysdale ordered extra socks in your size for the store, and Nick got in that yuppie ice cream for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. I, I didn't know. We'll be all right with the disappointment, but it's going to be hard explaining to all our little kids when they're coming down with the flu and strep throat, and poison ivy, and croup, and not to mention those new viral diseases. And of course, there's always the measles. Anybody there? Hey, Mike. Hey, a cup of coffee and a donut, please, Nick. Uh, heard you spent the night with my daughter, Mike. Oh, we got snowed in. I understand. We slept in separate rooms. Well, I understand. I in no way compromised her honor. Too bad, but you'd made a great team. I, I understand. Thanks. You think we're too nosy. That's not it. I understand. Things didn't work out, Mike. You two cut quite a rug on the Well, I didn't see you there that night, Miss Jenkins. Oh, I only go once, twice a week. Uh, everybody oh, told yeah. me. Well, good luck, Sonny. Oh, don't look so sad, Miss Drysdale. I, I'm not the guy you thought I was. We're just so proud of you, Mike. We just wish you loved us as much as we loved you. That's all. Oh, you sure are in a hurry. Well, it's a great opportunity. I'm the head of the... He's a pharyngeal unit there. Well, I can't pass this up, Bob. No, I guess not. Grandpa! Damn. Grandpa! Something's wrong with Janet. I went to the barn to visit her, and she's lying on her side, and she can't breathe. You go and stay with her. I'll call Sarah, and then I'll be right out. very violent about their babies. Mike, I'm going to need your help. I was really planning on getting on the road. Please, Daddy, you have to. Janet needs you.
Why don't the other babies let that one? Uh, this little guy right here? Oh, oh, there you go. Because he's the runt. It's nature's way. But he'll die. No, he won't. Not if we take care of him. Yeah. Will he really be all right? Mm -hmm. You'll just have to be his mom. How? Well, be like your mom. She was good at it, obviously. You turned out well. If I'm his mom, who's gonna be mine? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I'm not sure I have the answer. Too bad you and my dad didn't get back together. Well, I'm afraid that wasn't in the cards. It's not easy finding good moms. Honey, why don't you do what I did when I was by? What's that? Pretend she's there. Talk to her. Ask her questions. In your head. She's never really gone, you know. She's inside of you. And then you can have her anytime, in any way you want. I, I want her to be like my mom. And you. Thank you, Julie. What's Patrick gonna do when I go? Can't we just stay through Christmas? Please, Dad, please. I'm sorry, but we can't. Julie, sometimes part of being a good mother, a really good mother, is doing the very best for your baby. What about me? This is it, huh? Hey, wait a minute. There's one more. What's this, Bob? Uh, I'm going with you. Well, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I'm not, not going to spend Christmas here all alone. Well, what about the farm? Oh, I already called a neighbor. He's going to come down and take care of things while I'm gone. Uh, Sarah's going to take care of Patrick. We can drop him off on the way, on the way out. Come on, honey. Oh, sweetheart. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I can't believe you won't be here for the lighting of the tree. Uh, yeah, well, Jilly needs me. At least you're coming back. Uh, maybe he'll change his mind. No, he won't. He's obviously just the wrong person. It's fate. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> maybe. Though he is making a big mistake. He'll be bored with otolaryncology in a month. Yeah, well, that's nasopharyngeal he's going into. No, no. He told me otolaryngology. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. There's plenty of fish in the sea. You know, Doc, you've been running your tail off for 20 years trying to improve things here. Everybody thinks you're the best thing since pivot irrigation. That's very nice of you to say. Yeah, but maybe it's time you did something for yourself. Get something you need. I have everything I really want. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not that easy. 
You know how to get a town hall fixed. You know how to take care of a little pig. But you don't know how to go after something you really want. Don't be afraid, Sarah. Oh, my Patrick. Everyone carrying my things around like that doorman of yours. Yeah. I'd be decrepit in a week. Haven't you got some chores for me to do? <laughs> we got maintenance men for that. Bob, you're on Christmas holiday. Yeah. Relax. Look out the window. Enjoy yourself. I did that already. Well, I'll try again. <laughs> Christmas doesn't last long. I'm, um, I'm looking for Mike Reiser, uh, Dr. Mike Reiser. He's not here anymore. He's not? No. Nope. Dr. Goldstein, emergency. Tell me I had a promotion. Let me guess. You're the woman who's been running that hospital back in Mike's hometown. How did you know that? Well, Mike mentioned you. He works on a different floor now. I see. And what department is that? Administration. Administration? Yes. Didn't he tell you? But he's a doctor. He requested a change. I wish I knew what was going on with him. Well, to be honest with you, I wish the same thing. About a year ago, he started having anxiety attacks at work. They got progressively worse until about a week ago when he suddenly couldn't do his job anymore. At all. I thought going home might help him to work things out, but... He came back early and asked to be transferred to administration. He asked, but he told me that he... I see. Well, if you'd like to see him, I'm sure he's in. Yeah, I would. How's it going back home? You find a doctor yet? No. We'll have to close the hospital down for good. That's too bad. It is. Uh, Sue, is Mike around? He's up on the roof, getting some air. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to surprise him. Thanks. I'm sure you will. You didn't tell me you got a promotion in the North Pole. Well, I guess when I came home, I... Remembered how much I like bad weather. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Well, I guess it's hard for you to understand. <laughs> Absolutely. It is hard for me to understand. You're a doctor, Mike. What are you doing shuffling papers? <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Not anymore. I still don't understand. <sighs> Look, Sarah, when I went home, everybody treated me like a hero. I panicked. I'm not a hero, Sarah. I can't even walk into an operating room anymore. 
I'm afraid. I'm not who you thought I was. I just couldn't stand the thought of letting any of you down. Oh, Mike. Nobody cares if you're a doctor or not. They care about the man who listens to them when they talk. Doesn't judge them for their faults. A man who knows how valuable love is and can talk about it. It's not what you are or what you became that makes the whole town want you back again, Mike. It's who you've always been. I can't go back. I just haven't got the courage. What happened, Mike? Something must have happened to make you feel this way. I don't know. You know, you were always your own harshest critic. Whatever happened, maybe it's time you forgave yourself. I'm sorry. No, I'm... I'm sorry. We got into the doctor, you know. You did? Mm hmm Oh. Congratulations. She'll be moving in in a few days now. Great. Where's she from? From? Oh, uh... <laughs> Numb, Alaska. She wants culture. So, uh, why'd you come all the way down here? Because I decided you were right. I need to take care of myself, as well as everybody else. I need to get something I want. And I thought that was you. Things are just not meant to be. You did the best you could, Sarah. Everybody knows that. Daddy, would you mind hugging the mayor? The forecast cloudy and windy and cold this morning. What are you two going to do today? I'm taking Grandpa to the Children's Museum for the Christmas Festival. <laughs> well, yeah. We're going to find that pretty enlightening, huh? And then we're going to do some skating. You sure you're up for that? Well, if I'm not, we'll soon find out. <laughs> oh, I'm late. I got to go. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm. See you tonight. 
Well, at least he doesn't have to wear a beeper anymore. I can't send her home. You know, she's not stable yet. Anything could go wrong. I, I just want to keep her one more night for there observation. There is no justification. Justification. I'm having spilkies over this case. That's not justification enough. Look, Fred, I understand your line of thought, but hospital policy dictates that she has to be sent home. Hospital policy is endangering my patient. You know, if anything happens, it'd cost more to bring her back than to have her stay here one more night. No. Mike, please. I feel very strongly about this. There's nothing I can do. You know, you used to be such a good doctor. How'd you get to be such a good bureaucrat? I did not become a doctor so I could risk people's lives by sending them home from the hospital too early. I'll get back to you. What's the problem? The problem? <laughs> Medicine is not supposed to be like this. I'm sick and tired of, of business being more important than making people better. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I have to risk lives to save a company money that's supposed to save lives. I've been wondering how long it would take. What? There are very few doctors as talented as you. Even in your own hometown, they're closing the hospital because they can't find anyone competent enough to run it. They're not closing the hospital. That's what your friend Sarah told me. She told me they just hired somebody. She took a big risk coming all this way to see you. That woman has courage. bottoming out. His O2 sats are dropping. Let's go, let's go. More clamps. Bigger clamp. Come on, people, we're losing them. What's the pressure? Seven pressure. 40. More sponges. Nurse. Clamp. I'm taking over. You sure? I'm sure. Hey, Becky.
going to be okay? I don't know, Jilly. We have to wait and see. I'm going to stay up with him all night. Are you okay here? Yeah. Hey, Jilly. Yeah. I just want you to know he loves you very much. I know, Dad. seen each other very much in the last 20 odd years. I just didn't realize how fast time was passing. I'm not ready for this. And neither are you. You got a lot of chores waiting for you back home. Needs mending. The barn is a mess. And Jilly needs you. So do I. Where you going? Head of the surgical team. It was up to me. I thought we got all of it, but we didn't. I failed her. But you stood on it. Jimmy. 
Grandpa. Yeah. He's gonna be okay. Can I see him? Yeah, come on. Now will you quit smoking? Oh, good. Just what I need. A lecture. When you get out of the hospital, I'll take care of you. Well, I have to practice. I'm going to be a doctor when I grow up. Yeah, I bet you will be. <laughs> Just like your old man. Things have been kind of tough for St. Nicholas this past year. We lost Doc Jenkins. That's no reason that we shouldn't celebrate this holiday that exemplifies the people of this town, the people who are generous and giving. And because we have not found a doctor to replace Doc Jenkins, the hospital will have to close. Still, Still, it's imperative that we continue to celebrate this holiday the way we always have, with joy and with faith, that things happen as they do because there's a reason. And we shouldn't let this setback make us feel like failures. And. Um, since this year's honoree for Grand Electrician was unexpectedly called away, leaving us with nobody to replace him, I am... Um... Wait a minute. Excuse me. What? Excuse me. Wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse us. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we're late. My dad had a heart attack in Minneapolis. But he's fine. He's going to be just fine. He's going to be up and, and back home as soon as they can get him here. Oh, Mike, you bring him back here. We'll let him stay with us for just as long as it takes for him to recover. That's right, we will. Well, I did want to say, um, you all have always treated me like a hero. And it's you that are really the heroes. I mean, you've stayed here. You, you've dedicated your whole lives to helping other people. I mean, you've made your own lives, but, well, you've, you've created the futures of others. And I think that's great. I really do. And I want that example for my own daughter. So, well, if it's still okay with all of you, I, I'd like to accept the position as the head of the St. Nicholas Hospital. I want to come home.
Sarah? Sarah? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's wrong? So all of a sudden you just got rid of all your problems? No, not all of a sudden. <laughs> it's taken a long time. With the help of a lot of people. What if it all comes back? I don't want them hurt. I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm in a place that I love. I'm very happy. Are you sure? I'm very sure. Why'd you tell me you'd found a doctor? I didn't want your pity. Oh, yeah? Well, <laughs> I shouldn't have lied to you. You deserve more than that. Yes, I do. You deserve somebody that admires you and has all of his life. Absolutely correct. You deserve someone who respects you for what you've done with your life and wants nothing more than to spend the rest of his life. Merry Christmas, Sarah. Merry Christmas, Grandpa.